Hey, everybody. This is Amy Hart. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you guys are staying safe, healthy, and positive out there. I know it's day by day right now, but we're all in this together. And I'm sending you guys love and light and hoping for some good news coming in the next couple weeks. I'm really excited about my guest today. I actually interviewed her quite a while ago when she first started her career. And she's, she's super spunky. She's amazing. Her name is Philippe Herrig. And you guys know her. She's an American kickboxer, um, mixed martial artist who competes in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. She's been in the business for 17 years. She's in the straw weight division. She has 28 wins under her belt. Super talented, super cute. And she's actually had an injury. So she's been out for a little while. And we're going to talk to her about what she's been doing the past 11 months to take care of herself and when she's getting back in the ring. So I'm so excited to have her on. Felice. <laughs> Hi. Hey, how are you? Where are you? I live in Illinois, Chicago. Oh, cool. Okay. What, what's been going on there with, with COVID? It's um, we are on lockdown, supposedly. Okay. All the businesses are shut down. But it's kind of bullshit because so many are open, you know, that are, like, not really essential. So it's like. Yeah. But my boyfriend has, um, he has a gym, so he's, he's had to shut down. So that's really, like, affected things. Um, yeah, I can imagine. How how are you holding up? You doing okay? Yeah. Um. So I had knee surgery a year ago, and um, I thought by now I would be like ready to go. Um. So I'm basically doing the same thing that I did before the whole like uh, quarantine thing. Like I just go to the gym every day, work in my rehab, go to you know therapy. Luckily. Like I said, because my boyfriend has a gym, I still get to do yeah. that. Because you had to do major adjustments on your training right now. So, but you're still doing full on training. Um. Well, I um just because I tore the ACL, I haven't really been like right before the the lockdown type thing, and most of the gym shut down. I was able to get back to my training, but I ended up doing too much that I got a bone contusion. I got oh, a. Wow updated MRI just because I was in so I was in a lot of pain and whatnot and um it's hard because you know they don't you're supposed to push yourself and as pushing yourself but with an injury like this you don't know how much is too much and how much is not enough but you're supposed to push yourself that you can better too so it's like this weird balance you know of trying to yeah I I can imagine I therapy, but then it's like, I want to do jujitsu and I want to kick the bag and I want to do pads. So, you know, I just, um, I just was doing too much at once. So right before everything closed down, um, I got my MRI back and it was like, I had to like, I was told I had to cut back by like 50%. So, so for me, it's kind of, you know, it's, a, I wouldn't say a blessing, but it's forced me to actually cut back like 50%. So yeah, that's good. Well, I mean, you want to take your time because you don't want to re-injure yourself. I mean, that's that's a that's a whole nother thing, right? Right. Well, the um the MRI said that like the ACL and the meniscus, like all the tissues, everything's intact. It's just now it's like you know, with doing too much, it's like it causes like inflammation and um like I said, I had the deep bone bone contusion, which is a deep bone bruise. Which it's like, how do you really get that? I don't really know, but um. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I could have re-injured it. But as far as, like, the major issues, like, everything was, like, intact and healthy. Oh. So you want to get I, – I heard that you want to get two more – two fights in, I mean, before COVID happens this year. Like, what, what's going on with that? Do you think that you're in a place where you can get back into it pretty soon if, if you're able to? Um, yeah, I still have a little ways to go. Um, that's what's so hard is because, you know, when I – first got the injury and then surgery it was like oh six, it's like a six to nine month um rehab but it's already been like it's been a year since the injury and then it's been 11 months since um wow. yeah my surgery so I still have a little ways to go um you know I can't train as hard as I want just because when I train too much then I end up like with, with the pain um, I still want, like, my goal is still fight two times this year. And okay. again, 
hard to, and that's just what I'm going to keep setting in my mind, but it's hard to say yes or no, because every time I feel like I'm getting better and like turning a corner, I'm like, oh, it's, it's starting to feel like a knee again. And then I push myself thinking that like my knee's all better. And then I right. backtrack and, um, because it causes like, you know, inflammation or the bone contusion. So it's really hard for me to say like how far along I am, you know? What, what do you think? Um, so there's a lot of buzz going on like with the UFC right now and Dana White's decision to, to know, <laughs> there's your cat. I was going to ask about your cat. <laughs> I was originally going to do the interview upstairs in my bed and she was there. And the last time I did an interview, like she just would not like, she was like, move <laughs> it. She wanted all the attention. So. Do you know what's so funny? Almost in all my podcasts, either my dogs are in it or some of these animals are here. I mean, we're with them all the time. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to get, this is the thing. They're going to get so used to us being around. Like when we actually have a normal life again, they're going to have like these like attachment disorders and like panic attacks. Or like I said, I've been home, like I've been home so much anyways that it's yeah. a lot more now, obviously, because so much is closed. But, um, I always try to spend tons of time with her. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I get it. Dana White wants to continue with his sport. He said his sport's going to be the first one back. He's thinking May 9th in Florida. But there's a lot of, a lot of people that are, are kind of upset about it, the feeling like that we're in a major global pandemic and he's, he's wanting to start this again. What are your thoughts on that? I might be biased because I won't be able to fight by then. So I'm like, oh, but... I do feel, um, it's like hard because you don't want to talk bad about the box man, but yeah, I get it. Try to eliminate the spread of the virus and how many people will have to be in close quarters in order to start to have a USC event. You know, you're thinking all the fighters, all the coaches, all the ringside doctors, yeah. officials, uh, you know, like, um, how many, and, and not only that, like how, how are fighters supposed to train? Like then that means they have to go to gyms, try to train, try to gather all these people to be around. It just seems like it's, it would make things worse. You know, it's yeah. kind, of, kind of like F you, uh, COVID and, you know, government and everybody, you know, like we don't care if we the virus as long as our sport continues to go on. It just kind of seems, um. But that's, that's sort of the attitude he's giving off. I mean, it, I, I get it. I know that's sort of the culture and stuff. But, but you're right. I mean, it's, everybody's involved in this, not just, you know, UFC. I mean, there's no sports. I mean, there's no sport. All the sports have been canceled all summer, like every sporting event. And I, I think it's dangerous, personally, what he's doing. But that's just my personal opinion. But. I don't really think that it would – I don't think it's going to happen the way he – Part of me feels like it's talk and it's a publicity stunt. Like, who really knows? Yeah. How I just don't understand how he could actually make it happen. You know, you can't you're gonna fly to every single where everybody lives and like pick them up in your private jet. And <laughs> I mean, what, what, uh, yeah, what is this place he's talking about? Like, where where is it gonna happen in Florida? The islands? I, we're kind of laughing about it a little bit because we don't really have any specifics. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, 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 part of me just feels like it's a publicity stunt, you know, um, because it just seems almost impossible that it would actually happen. Let's just say, like, in the summer, would you, would you do it if you could? I've been waiting to fight. Yes, I would do it. I mean, if, if, if it could happen, I would for sure do it. Yeah. Makes me sound hypocritical now. You're a fighter. You want to fight. You you've been out for a little while. You're you're anxious to get back in there. I mean, I can tell you, your determination is the same as it's always been. It's just your can your knee handle it? Wear my face mask in the fight. I guess we'll all. <laughs> but I, mean, I I just don't understand a contact sport. How there's not. I mean, it's impossible not to be connected with each other. But I. All these fighters would have to get their medicals too. You know. Right. But, you know, before you fight, you have to get, you know, and whatever is the life, whatever is licensed in, however you have to be licensed in, um, like Florida, like, let's say it's an eye exam. Let's say it's a, you know, your medical, like where, like, all, I got called from my doctor that he wasn't going to see me for my knee because it's not for, you yeah. know, so it's like, how, how would we even, how would these fighters go about getting all these appointments in either? 
you know? Right. And then, and then you go back to the training or I can't imagine everybody's like training to their highest potential right now because how can they? Oh, and a lot of gyms could get fined, you know, for even being open. Right. Like three people in his gym. It was me, one of his, you know, employees and him and somebody called the cops. And they're like, oh, if you do that again, you're going to get fined. So how are these gyms that are so close contact, you know, with each other going to be yeah. able to? With all these just being out for a long time and, and the injuries that you had, like, mentally, like, how are you going to prepare yourself? Because it's, it's intense, you know, coming back after that long of time. I mean, I know you have the talent, but what are you, do, you going to do to really, you know, prepare yourself? I don't think mentally it's, you know, mentally the injury has been the hardest part. I think now okay. I just state to where I'm just grateful and thankful and happy to be there. You know how even like um, sometimes people get the phone call um, to fight in the UFC and they've never been in the UFC and that's their dream and they're not really at that level, but yeah, they're trying to like build this this young up and coming fighter and they need somebody kind of like. They need somebody to um, fill that spot and they get the call. It's like, sometimes it's like ignorance is bliss and you just don't care. You're just like, I'm just happy to be here. Right, right. I feel like that's kind of how I'll be, you know, just happy to be here. I mean, I've been fighting for 17 years, so, <laughs> like, and I've, I've faced so many, you know, so many there different obstacles in, in all areas and facets of the sport. So nothing I've really haven't seen before you know it's not like mentally I have to psych myself up and hype myself up to fight like I've been there like it's it's just like with my knee injury when I could finally you know drive a car again I could drive a car just fine um I think that I just need to go back to not thinking about oh I've been off for some time and I just thankful you know it, it sucks just be not grateful yeah get in there I've never been a, I've never been off of training for so long that I think that I'll just go back and I'll be hyped. I'll be re, rejuvenated. You know, I'll be cleansed. And <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> well, I mean, I talked, I did an interview with you. I don't know if you remember it was a long time ago. It was when you were first starting out and I was in Vegas and I was doing Fox sports. So much has changed since we did our interview, but I, I just, can you, like, tell me, like, through the years, like, what has changed for female fighters? Because when I interviewed you, the female fighters were just getting started. And they were just getting in there. I don't know if they had the respect that they deserved yet. But I feel like you guys have shown up. And the talent out there is incredible. And I don't know. Just tell me what you what your thoughts are today with having female fighters. Uh, um, right now, there's a lot more female fighters. I think just because – so when I started in the sport – there weren't very many opportunities for women. You know, there weren't very many females females on a fight card. And you had to really almost, like, promote yourself to, to where people would want you on a fight card. And then a lot of times, like, fighters would back out last minute, and then you'd have no replacements. Or if you did, you'd have to fight, you know, 10 pounds out of your weight class, even though there were right. no at the time. There were no actual weight classes before, um, before the UFC, like, established them. Um, but now, you know, let's say somebody, you know, UFC gets, you know, oh, their opponent backs out like a week, week notice, gets hurt, boom, you have a replacement. Like, there's so many people yeah. willing to fight because the money is there, um, because, you know, the opportunity is there. Um, there's, there's a lot more – it's risky, but there's also a lot of rewards to it, too. Um, you know, females have gotten so much – like – it's one of the only sports where women are just as exciting as the men. And I think so. There's so many exciting matchups that people look forward to. Um, you know, um, there's a lot more, again, even back when I first started too, um, because there was no opportunities for women, it was even harder in gyms and training because you weren't looked at as you weren't respected as much. Because yeah. You, to spend time time on you because or with you because it was like what what are you gonna do in this pool? like what's worth my while like why is this worth my while? there's nothing there's nowhere for you to go in this sport you know so that was almost the you know the idea of it and then or you know 
a lot of men didn't take women seriously and didn't think, think that women took the sport seriously. Not that they didn't, right. but um, I think it was a little more sexist at gyms. Um, oh, for sure. And now, like, I think because, you know, you see women doing big things, now it's like a lot of people needed to see it to believe it. Even though a lot of women, you know, who pioneered the sport, I don't know, I can't speak for other women, you know, what they believed, but a lot of, you know, I, I myself fought just because I loved it. And I always believed that the opportunities would be there. And I knew that um, women were just exciting, as exciting as men, you know, especially like the ones that, you know, the women that did take it, the sport very seriously and were very good. Um, who, was, then, who was somebody that you would think of that in your mind that you just were like, you know, that you kind of looked, not, maybe not looked up to, but you admired their tenacity or their talent or their skills there's, through you know, the years? Shana, like Shayna Baszler, you know, I look at all like the women who like really pioneered the sport and that were like, like Shayna Baszler, like Sarah Kaufman, Roxanne yeah. Mott. And even now, you know, um, or Holly Holm, you know, I look up yeah, to Yeah, I love Holly. Who were in the sport before, um, before there were opportunities to be in the UFC, before like it was super big. Um, I look, I look up still to the women who pioneered the sport but are still in the sport you know that have longevity because it's it's very hard because there were so many hardships with women um it was hard to get fights it was hard to get fights in or around your weight class it was hard to get good matchups um it just there was there was just so much there's hard to find training partners especially when you're in a sport that's in its infancy how many women can you find that that love the sport as much as you do that at a high level to train with because they're all they're scattered around because there just weren't that many of them um so I look up to the women who are still like I said just still in the sport just and still in it yeah. yeah do you feel like um that women are getting paid more equally or or I mean obviously they're getting paid better than they were before but comparatively to men no <laughs> like yeah. no they're not, not even. Not even close. Um, and I don't know if that'll ever change. I mean, women in the workforce anywhere, how, how are they paid, you know, yeah. compared to men? I think that's how it's going to be for a mm -hmm. while. You know, and women but, take what we can get right now because it's more than we were getting paid before. You know, of course, we all want more money, but... Yeah, but when I watch you, I mean, when I watch women fight, like, you guys train so hard. You work harder than anyone else, and you get in there. I, I don't know. I think it's just as exciting as the men. I think it's more exciting. Like, society has to, like, change, and it has to grow to a certain point to where it's... Right, where women are, will have equality. And yeah, it's, it's not easy. But I, I think, but compared when you started, do you, I mean, do you feel like you've gotten, you've made huge strides, but with like sponsorships and things like that? No, I, I had so many, I've always had so many sponsors. Um, yeah. And they, you know, a lot of that has to do with my manager. A lot of it has to do with um, um, promoting myself. Um, and that, it's like, there's so many, I think that because we're grown so much, it's even harder to get sponsors now i th answers it about <laughs> well hi what's your cat's name again <laughs> she loves you. and i'm busy like it's like she knows. <laughs> of course they, they want your attention the minute you're busy <laughs> i love it so what, what do you do like what are some of your interests like outside of fighting i i, I heard that you like like sign language and drawing and you're arti very artistic Yes. Um, I love, I love sign language. I haven't gotten to practice in a while. Um, <laughs> I, I love to draw. My dad is, um, my dad's actually really amazing at drawing and, um, he hadn't drawn in like 20 years and I just bought a house in December and, um, I kept telling my dad, oh, I'm going to have a drawing room and you're going to come over and draw. And like, I finally was like, come over and draw with me, dad. And I know he wasn't feeling it. And then once he like got into it, he now like, he comes over like once or twice a week 
and he draws with me and he draws like three to five pictures a day and he sends oh, them. Oh, really? Me. That's cool. Yeah. You know, I want to, I'm in my basement. I want to show you. They're so cool. Like he's, do you have one? Show me. Yeah. But I gotta, I gotta move. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I have five, like, I have a whole folder of them now because I mean, he's so good. Like, so talented and I'm so excited that he got back into it because he was like in my opinion it was like a waste of talent so he's doing a couple of different like I love rainbows so he made me this oh I love it so bad of me Amazing. I'm trying to look at it oh I love it cool he's he's doing a series right now extinct superheroes this is the mighty narcissist <laughs> <laughs> that's great I know a couple of those <laughs> yeah, this one's kind of gross it's fester face so. oh, oh wow that's really good that's yeah. awesome so very cool yeah he's pretty awesome and uh lately wait I don't you don't you have a video game or aren't you a, a you're a cartoon or something like <laughs> I read something about that I was in the, um, it was years ago, I was in the very first, it was called Supremacy MMA. It was the very first video game with, yeah. uh, live, like, real, like, fighters in it, like, as themselves. It was me cool. and this, Michelle Gutierrez, so we were the two girls in it. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> do you ever think you want to, what do you want to do, like, I mean, I know you still want to fight, but at some point, like, you're probably going to do something different. Like, what, do you have any idea what you want to do? Is it something I'll do with drawing or? Um, you know, there's a lot that I aspire to do in life. And it's hard. Like once I, do, I pick something, I'm like all out with it. But I kind of want to open up. Sorry, my hair, like, <laughs> this is my hair. <laughs> no, <we're, laughs> I feel the same way. I don't even know what this is, but this is just what's going to happen. <laughs> um, I want to open like not a restaurant, like a juice bar. Cool. A juice bar slash cocktail bar, like it's a juice bar by day, <laughs> cocktail bar by night. So I like that. <laughs> we have a few more minutes. Um, so what what, what advice do you have? Like, because you've been you've been in this for a long time and you've experienced all kinds of things. What do you have advice advice for like young girls getting into this, getting into MMA? Like, if you were giving yourself advice, you know, ten years ago, what would you say? I would say that nothing comes easy. It's, you have to work very, very hard. Your heart needs to be in the, in it. Like, you have to actually love the sport. You can't just want to be in the sport because it it makes you look cool or you want to be famous or whatnot because it's a pretty brutal sport. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, like anything in life, work hard and give it your all. Like, don't, don't be half-assed and don't expect anything to be handed to you. Well, I'm so happy to talk to you. I, I've watched your career and I think you're awesome. And I'm rooting for you to get back in there and kick some butt and get back on top. I know you will. Thank you. I you. I've, um, I've always been a fighter in life too. So I think that um, having like that fighter mentality, like, I, it's helped me like push through this, even just like this injury, you know? And, yeah. Well, where can we find you? Where, where are you on Twitter and, and Instagram? And yeah. And my Facebook, everything is just at Felice Herrig. It's like, I tell people to remember it like, um, Felice, like Navidad and then, <laughs> but minus the N. So Felice Herrig is where I'm at everywhere. Oh. Okay, so I, I'm going to keep everybody posted on my my social media, but we'll we'll keep watching and hoping oh, for a speedy recovery, darling. Seriously. I don't. I, I'm not going to have a TikTok. TikTok is all like the new craze, so you won't be able to. TikTok. I'm, you don't like TikTok. <laughs> I'm out of like I lo like every time I get used to like a social like I love I used to love, and then Vine was like the. Um, I just, I can only handle so much social media. I, I like to be in my real life. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. It gets crazy. You know what? That's what I was going to ask you too. Like they didn't have social media like back then. So it was just you and, and your promotions. It's, it's so crazy now that people are so focused on 
you know, all of the social media stuff. What do you think about that? Well, actually, um, the first, like when I first started fighting, and I was on this reality show, Fight Girls on the Oxygen Channel. Yeah, I remember. But uh, so Facebook had just like come out. There was like Facebook and MySpace. And then, you know, eventually like Twitter and whatnot. But I actually used, you know, social media to promote myself. So it did right. a lot. Now I'm just like, to the, but now that it's grown so much, it's like to the point to where nobody lives in like the real world. I it's, know. Oh, you didn't like my photo or, oh, like <laughs> I almost, everybody just does everything in life just to look good on social media. Like, oh, I'm going to go to the gym and I put all this makeup on and I'm going to, do these butt butt things <laughs> but, but and go do this one set and then leave as long as, you know like they say if it if you didn't post it it didn't happen you right, know right but I, we all know that it's not all real <laughs> yeah I feel like people are losing touch of like real life and what's important and that's I why agree. I've been like I go through like detoxes like where I just don't go on social media because it's I feel like it's almost um, becoming toxic and not helping. It can be. Yeah, it can be because if people rely on those likes and those like engagements. They really freak out if they, I don't know. I don't, I don't get the whole mentality. It's, it's or you, crazy. And you compare yourself to everybody too. It's like, you know, always trying to keep up, you know, keep up with the Joneses, but on social media. So, um, and I've been reading all all about like how toxic, you know, how mentally. I guess it's like um, social media is like a drug. Like people like yeah. you get from like your likes and whatnot. So, but then it's like you're always trying to figure out what can I post to to get these likes, and so all you see is like girls half naked on social media. <laughs> it's just like almost like narcissistic. It, it is. It is. So, but, but you know what, I mean, I, I feel like, um, people look up to you and, and what you're doing in your sport and I, I like your posts. You're, you're actually doing something in your posts. You're like training or you're, you know, you're, you're doing something, you're talking about something that's sort of relevant. So I, I, I think you're a role model for sure. Oh, thank you. So yeah. sometimes it's hard though too, because you don't want to, something that might be a good post, you're like, oh, do I stop what I'm doing and try to make sure I get it on camera and. So sometimes I'm like, oh, I need to post. Like I used to be like, I'm like an obsessive person. So in the beginning, when all social media, like I would post constantly. Like I was that girl. I was, oh, da, 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 look how many. <laughs> yeah. So different. But now it's like I'm like, I don't want to rack my brain trying to figure out like what's going to be a good post for social media, or uh, stop in the middle of like train. You know, a good training session to try to like make sure somebody's feeling filming if I get it I get it if I don't I don't I'm not right I'm not you gotta be like that yeah well cool well I'm so happy to have you on I I wish you the best in your recovery and stay healthy and safe during this this crazy time and um you know keep me posted I want to know what's what's going on with you I'm right. so excited to see you fight again I dried my hair I've been trying <laughs> to but like I thought it would be dry by now I try not to do I'm trying to let it grow. I don't like, I try not to put yeah. hot, like the curling well, iron. Right now, it's a perfect time. You don't have to do anything. You can just let it air dry. <laughs> now I feel stupid. <laughs> you look great. That's you look great. Okay. All right. Thank you. It was great talking with you. Take care of yourself. Okay. Bye. <laughs>